can be visible by videos, except those who are presenting. I put your mobile phones in silent. And please note that this session will be recorded. We will use the Q&A, question and answer box at the bottom uh, to chat your questions and then they will be responded to. Uh, the program of the day is, uh, I will invite our country director, uh, Mr. Wilson Kaind, to give opening remarks. Uh, thereafter, I will invite um, other representatives. We have Victor Oyez. Uh, Victor is the, the acting head of the operations policies implementation and business analyst division at RRA. And then we have Philip McGarry, who's a business analyst at RRA in the DTB, the most impact sales uh, department. They will present us these changes. And then we have uh, 20 minutes also for questions and answers. And then I invite our director, Stephen Ganga, to give the closing remarks. Without further ado, I invite Mr. Nikain to give the opening remarks. Wilson, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, uh, Angelo, for the kind introductions. As the moderator has mentioned, uh, my name is uh, Wilson Kaindi. I'm the country director of uh, KPMG uh, Rwanda. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome uh, to this tax webinar. We are profoundly honored to have you as part of this webinar this morning. Uh, we know you could have been attending to so many other work demands, but we are grateful that you you have put aside the next one or two hours to be part of this discussion. And I can guarantee you that uh, this will be time uh, well spent. On this call, we have a range of participants, uh, some of our clients, uh, future clients. We have members of the wider corporate sector and the presenters as well today. I would like to start by expressing my sincere appreciation uh, to the RRA Commissioner for Domestic Taxes, uh, Madame Hajara Vatambiza, who graciously offered a knowledgeable staff who will be the key uh, presenters this morning as they walk us through the key changes in the tax space in Rwanda. I would also like to thank the KPMG staff uh, some of whom you hear speak this morning, and others will remain in the background, but they all have worked tirelessly uh, to put together this very informative event. Uh, today we shall learn about the new corporation tax requirements as we continue to evolve in the new uh, digital era. We all know that in a bit streamline its operations, uh, creating new and innovative ideas for improving uh, tax compliance. Uh, the Rwanda Revenue Authority has significantly amended uh, the corporation income uh, tax uh, requirements, as we shall see in more details. Uh, many controls have been added to the tax return. The taxpayers need to be, pay uh, attention uh, to this, especially during the 2021 uh, filing and beyond. Uh, as we all know that uh, failure to comply could have financial uh, implications in terms of uh, penalties. So I would like us to get into the gist of the discussion for the day. So I don't want to spend a lot of time, but I just want to encourage each one of us to learn and participate. Uh, there will be a question and answer session, and the KPMG team is always available to assist you in any uh, tax uh, compliance matters, including the matters that will be discussed this morning. Uh, we shall continue to work with the corporate world RRA to enhance the compliance in Rwanda as a whole. I know this will be time well spent this morning, as I said earlier. And now I want to hand back to the moderator to guide us through the rest of the session. Uh, thank you very much. Enjoy the webinar.
Uh, thank you, Wilson, uh, for, for, for those good uh, remarks. Uh, I now invite Victor Oyez to take over the floor and present to us uh, the, the, the key changes in the tax filing requirements. Victor Oyez, uh, the floor is yours. Good morning to you all. It's Philip Mugabe who is going to start the first presentation, then Victor will follow. Welcome, Philip. I'm sharing the presentation. Yes, we can see it, put it in the presentation mode. Good morning once again. So um, my name is Mugabe Philip. I'm a business analyst at Rwanda Revenue Authority. So I'm with my co-facilitator, Wajas Victor, who is the acting head of operation policy implementation and business analysis at Rwanda Revenue Authority. So we've been invited by KPMG management to share to you members today, the key changes on corporate income tax. Actually, it's not new, but it's just changes and some validation controls that were inserted in the existing declaration. Sorry, my slides have not been moving. So as you see, it's new version of income tax declaration. It's not the rate of income tax that has changed. It's not really new. Uh, there are scholars that have been inserted into the declarations as we are going to see. So the content of this presentation, as I've said, I'll be presenting the first presentation, then Victor will be presenting the second presentation and will be there to answer most of the raised questions if there are any. So the content of my presentation is, the first one is new version of CIT, PIT basis. We are going to see the basis of these controls. Second, we are going to see the controls which have been established and then we shall see the changes that have been made on the annexure. The new version of CIT PIT basis, the first one is EBM for all. As you are all aware, in the law number 026 of 2019, 026-2019 of 18th September 2019, in its Article 17, it reads, a person who carries out any taxable activity must issue an invoice generated by an electronic invoicing system certified by the tax administration. This law was, this law passed in 2018, but we are starting it in 2021. And as you are aware, in the, towards the end of 2020, there was Commissioner General's announcement that we are informing the public to be reminding them of this article and requesting them to be issuing the electronic invoices generated by EBM. So generally, the basis for the controls we started in, in corporate income tax the basis was this, which required all businesses carrying out business activities to issue the electronic billing machines. Then in so doing, we also considered the stakeholders' observations. We never only considered the law. We had, to, we had several meetings with the different stakeholders, different business sectors, construction sectors, bank, Banking sectors 
and several sectors. So we had views from them. Are you listening? Yes, I can hear you. I, I can oh, see I'm someone in the chat. I can see someone in the chat that has uh, audio issues, but um, I can hear you well. You can hear me well? Yes. Okay. Can I try to increase my voice? Yes, try. Okay. So you had the first point, which was about EBM for all. Yes, we heard about it. Okay, so I was saying on the second point that in so doing, we considered the stakeholders' observations. We did not do this alone as RRA, but we consulted different stakeholders, including you, the auditing firms, business economies, banking sectors, construction sectors, transport sectors, all sectors, all kinds of sectors. We consulted them, we had their observations, of which we considered in these controls. So we never did this just alone as RRA. We also considered the observations of different stakeholders. Also in so doing, we did it in the way that simplifies the filing process. It's not completely a new thing or a new declaration process. We just updated the existing one and to assure you, the filing process is more simplified. We also did this keeping in, keeping in mind the system performance. We did it in the way that we keep the system performance to avoid the breakdowns of the system and so on. We also linked the new version to the previous ones for reference and reporting purposes. This means the new declaration is not really new as such. We just linked the controls into the existing declaration form. And this is more easy. So that was, that was about the basis for the new version of corporate income tax and personal income tax. Then let me go to the second point of the controls which have been established. My presentation is uh, somewhat a bit technical. When I go to lines, I'm in the practical part. Those who know the declaration form, it has got lines, 95, it's of sales, the annual sales. There is, there is no change on that. It is as usual, then line, line six of the opening stock. Line six, these are the controls. Line six, it, it is of the opening stock. It will be the closing stock of the previous year. And then zero for the new taxpayer without the previous period. That means when you are declaring on line six on the opening stock, they will find a figure from the previous declaration. And then there will be zero for the new taxpayers without the previous period declaration. Let's rush to where controls are. Line seven. On the declaration form, normally line seven is for the purchases. So here, line seven will be for the purchases only supported by electronic billing machine or DMC. Those are custom declaration documents. Then line eight, closing stock, to be free entry with a maximum in EBM. Uh, line 16, says of operating expenses, only operating expenses with EBM as supporting documents or BMC. Then line 18, it is expenses supported by withholdings. And in so doing, we also considered, considered taxpayers with special calendars. For example, those whose calendar 
taxation calendar starts from May to, to April or from April to March like that. So allow me to compare these lines. On line seven of purchases, as you are aware, to some businesses, one expense can be a purchase to one, one taxpayer and then an expense to another taxpayer. So these lines, line seven, line 16, line 18, they are all about expenses and purchases. So what we shall be doing on this, on the declaration form, I'm going to, to show you a simple demo. What we shall be doing here, on line seven, let's take an example. If your purchases and expenses, if the total purchases and expenses, let's say are uh, 2 million, because you can't really differentiate what is your purchase and what is your expense, we shall be allowing you to use your total purchases and expenses on either of the lines. For example, on line seven, if, as I've said, if you have a total purchase and expense of 2 million, we shall be allowing you to use all the 2 millions on line seven. But if we allow you to use all the 2 millions as your purchases, that means you have no operating expenses. Because remember, it's a total of all purchases and expenses. If you use, let's say, 1 million on line seven, we shall be allowing you to use the remaining million on line 16. Then line eight, to some businesses that offer services, that deals with services, for them, expense for them, most of them do not have purchases, but do consider their expenses as their purchases that he contributes to its gross profit. For example, here on line 18, expenses supported by withholdings. This means the withholdings This means the withholdings will be considered. For example, if you deal in services and you withheld your clients, then you declared the withholdings. So we shall be consider we shall be considering the gross total of the withholdings, the amount on which withheld. We shall be consider it as an expense which can be also allowed to either be put on line seven and be considered in the gross sales. So this means you will be considering your gross, your expenses incurred on with all things in the purchases on line seven. I don't know whether they are clear because here this is where the controls lie most especially on line 7, 16, and 18. And most people have been raising questions on line 18, and we've updated it because previous, previously we are not considering this line 8, 18 in the purchases, but we have updated the system to also consider it in order to facilitate those businesses that deals in services. So let's continue. Important notes, just what I've been explaining above, the total of line seven, 16 and 18 shall not exceed the total amount adjusted of the list of purchases in EBM, then plus adjusted value of the imports and the total expenses supported by withholdings if the total of seven and 16 deaths plus also 18 tends to exceed the system will display a message which reads that the total, the value of expenses you tend to, to use exceeds the total value of local purchases in EBM 
and imports on DMC. So let's have a simple demo here to explain more what I've been saying. For those who are used to declaration, when you log in, we shall be, there shall be a menu that will allow you or a link where you shall be able to view your purchases and imports. Then from there, you can adjust. We do agree that if it's an expense, for example, if you paid for, if you have a prepayment for say electricity, you do agree that you can decide if it's one invoice, but you can decide to use a part of it in this period, then the rest to be used in the second, in the following year. So we have allowed you the adjustments. Let's see a demo here. For example, here. Here it's a total value, the receipt total value. This is, this is for EBM. And then here we have CIF, this is for customs. This is a dummy tin I'm using. For example, this you see here, it is 314 billion, but the adjusted receipt value is 313. That means the one billion has been adjusted and carried forward. Here balance to carry forward in the next year. So the moment you click here, change SDC value, it requires you the invoice number. Take an example of that I've given of electricity. It requires you that invoice number. You put it, then it brings the total value to displace the total value of that invoice. You adjust. If it's an invoice of say 1 million, you can adjust it and you decide to use 1 million this period, then the rest, the remaining million will be carried forward to the next period. And the system will allow you to carry it to up to all the years you need to carry it. So then there you will be using this, the total expense this time will be the one adjusted after carrying forward the balance. So here I've been having the total invoices, but here I'm having the adjusted value. So it's the adjusted value that you will be considered as the expense. The same applies here to customs declarations. Let's go to line 17. Line 17 will be of expenses related to wages and salaries. This will also consider the employer contribution for the employees to RSSB, the maternity leave, the 5%, and the rest of the, all the employer contributions to the employees. So this will be automated in the sense that it will check into your pay as you earn declarations and get the totals from there. Line 19, it will be for expenses not requiring EBM or DMC. We really agree that not all expenses can be supported by EBM or DMC. We do agree there are some that are not supported. For example, if you go to Irembo and you declare, pay some few government charges, like some of the certificates issued there, we do agree that such do not have EBM expenses. So here on line 19, it will be a line for all such a expenses that do not require either an electronic bidding machine invoice or a DMC. So here we, here we have applied the rate. There is a rate applied to this, which is currently it is 27% of the total supported invoices. 
For example, if the supported invoices and the DMC you have, let's say 10 million, then 25% of it, here the system will be allowing you 27% of it as invoices not supported, as expenses not supported by either a EBM invoice or a DMC. You can, I know some of you are asking where, where do we get this 27%? It's a research that have been carried out by RRA risk department based on several factors. And they found out that at least for businesses, at least 27% of the total expenses that are supported, 27% of them, it's the maximum of the invoices that are not supported or the expenses that are not supported. But this is not a static. This, is, this rate is only for this year, 2021, and to keep on changing and, update, and being updated based on your observations, your comments, to keep on changing. It is not static that it will be 27% all years. So generally, those are the changes. But let's also see on other lines like line 46 of revenue surplus for specific specified entities exempted from CIT. As you are aware, there are there are some organizations required to submit, just to submit their financial statements to RRA, including the churches, the non-profit making organizations. They are just required to submit their financial statements to RRA. But in case they have surplus, they are required to pay corporate income tax on it. So this line 46 is just for that surplus. And it's for those exempted entities. In case they have a surplus, they just put it here on 946. They don't have to go through the, all the lines of the declarations, just as we've seen above. Then line 101, this is new on the declaration form. It's about the capital gains realized on the restructuring. And this is in according to Article 53 and 54 of income tax law. So it's new, the previous declarations, we had no such lines. Then line 102, it's some capital losses realized on restructuring. The same articles, restructuring is about so acquisition or mergers. So only the, the control here, it will only require you to upload the body resolutions in case you feel any amount on these lines. Then line 145, tax discount for microfinances. This is not new, but what is new here is that the system will check if you are claiming a discount on microfinance. You know microfinance have got incentives so if we are claiming such incentives, the system will check, is it really this company claiming the, these incentives? Is it registered in financial sector? Yeah, that will be checked. Then line 170, it's a foreign tax credit. This line has been there. It will, it will only require you to upload the certificate of the foreign tax credit. So let's go on part three on the changes. We made a few changes on the annexes. One is on the related party transactions. Related party transactions, we provided a link that will guide you on how to fill this. People have been filling this annex for related party transactions in different ways, but here, we provide the link that will guide you how to fill this annex. And this is about the transfer pricing. 
Some call it related party transactions, others call it transfer pricing. Then we've got annex of expenses not requiring to be supported by DMC or EBM. On the other line I've mentioned above, with expenses not requiring the EBM or the DMC receipt. Here I'll provide the details on the supplier's transactions. You will only provide the details on the supplier's transactions, but there will be no need of, or there will be no requirement of the experts to be supported by EBM or the DMC. Of course, on the annex, we've got a drop down list that entails all most of those expenses that do not require the EBM receipt. Then another new thing on the annex is to upload the foreign tax credit, just, have, just like I've mentioned above, when you fill in on line 70, the foreign tax credit, the system will require you to upload the certificate for that. That's only the control, just to upload the certificate. Then on line 100, one and 102 on the restructuring, it will require you to upload the board resolutions. In case there was acquisition or mergers, then the system will only require you to upload the board resolutions. Then on all tax incentives, certificates will be required. That's on that. That's in case you claim on line 168 on the incentives, whichever incentive, the certificate will be required. So thank you. That has, by, that has been my presentations. And then next is Victor to share his presentation. Then maybe after his presentation, we shall receive the, the comments your questions, if there are any. So thank you very much. Thank you, Philip. Uh, this is Victor. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear me. OK, thank you. Uh, Philip, remove your presentation, then I share the other one. Once again, good morning. My name is Victor. I'm acting head of division for operation policies implementation and business analysis in the domestic tax department. Uh, thank you for KPMG to give us this opportunity to uh, inform our client and your client uh, about some changes uh, which occurred during uh, 2021 fiscal year and uh, as well as uh, in 2022. Uh, I'm going to go through some changes regarding uh, not only income tax, but also uh, other important changes which um, have uh, an impact on the way you are uh, filing uh, taxes, not only income tax, but even other uh, taxes. Uh, first, we introduced a new tax regime called Simplified Accounting Regime. Uh, it's a new uh, uh, regime to file income tax for small, very small taxpayers, those with a turnover less than 20 million. Uh, they claimed not having the, uh, the way to claim their expenses. Uh, without passing through uh, different steps as uh, the big companies are doing uh, their income tax. We thought uh, about the way to facilitate them considering their expenses 
And this way is very easy. It's not like uh, big companies are doing the income tax. So taxpayers uh, registered under flat regime or lump sum regime can benefit from this simplified accounting regime by uh, deducting their expenses and pay 30% if companies or um, in the way we are computing PIT, if they are operators, personal businesses. Uh, this is new from 2021 before it was not there. The other changes were made on the declaration of uh, lump sum regime uh, because before the system did not avail where the taxpayers can deduct 15% uh, when retained by the suppliers. This 15% is when a taxpayer cannot demonstrate to, to the client uh, whether he or she paid income tax for previous period. The law uh, on income tax uh, published in 2018 stated that that taxpayer uh, will be uh, withheld 15%. So during the declaration of income tax, the taxpayer uh, will be able to uh, show us, uh, will be able to get a row where this 15% withheld will be deduct, deducted from uh, the taxes to be paid. Next, we realize that uh, taxpayers have had in the, in the registry database the information that is not, uh, that is out of date. We thought to, we thought to avail a way to update the information regarding uh, the email and the telephone because for many, many taxpayers, this information that we have in the system currently is out of date. So once in a quarter, when you enter in the system, the system will ask you to update the current, update the email and then the phone number. We are uh, showing you during that process, we show you the, the information that you have in the system, uh, meaning email and a phone number. And you have to, uh, to accept or to validate them, or you have to change then validate uh, with the new information. If the email and the telephone number still relevant, you just uh, click on save, then we go them as uh, the current or uh, updated information. If those information, I mean email and telephone, are no longer relevant, you change them, then you give us the relevant ones and you save then submit to RRA. It is done every uh, once a quarter and we will uh, be uh, happy to have that information because it will facilitate RRA and stakeholders to contact immediately the Rio and uh, the Rio person from the businesses. Oh, the other change regards uh, some compliance messages. Some of you probably you got them within 2021 period, even now. Uh, we realize that uh, some taxpayers do not uh, find time to come to RRA offices for changing their regime. For example, we know that regimes are uh, set uh, compared to the turnover of the taxpayers. A taxpayers with a turnover less than 12 million is uh, registered on flat regime. When you, your turnover goes over the 12 million, you do not have time to change it and you're still fighting under flat regime. To facilitate you, when your, turn, your turnover reaches a given level, let's say 12 million for uh, taxpayers registered the under flat regime, um, 20 million for taxpayers registered the under lump sum regime. When the turnover will reach, 
will go over that, uh, those uh, limits, you will get automatically the SMS um, requiring you to go to RRIA to change your regime because uh, during this year, you will have to change regime and file under a regime uh, which correspond with your current turnover. So you will get those uh, kind of messages, some of you, because uh, uh, I think the, the, the audience here is not uh, small or medium. Uh, I think you, most of you, you are large taxpayers, but you can even give this information to uh, other people who will need it. Uh, the other message regard uh, the change of VAT filing frequency. As you know, uh, when your turnover, your annual turnover is less than 200 million and franc, you have this option to pay your VAT on quarterly basis instead of paying uh, each, each month. So when your turnover goes beyond, uh, over 200 million, you have to come to RRA and request to change your frequency filing from quarterly to monthly. But most of you, most of taxpayers, did not do this. Reason why, uh, probably we think, uh, they, did it, they didn't know or they do not have enough time to do it. What we are doing currently, we are sending you the uh, SMS uh, reminding you that your turnover is over 200 million. So you have to change your frequency of filing VAT from quarterly to monthly. The next step, we will try to automate it. And uh, when you will get this uh, reminder SMS, know that the next period, the system will change your frequency filing from quarterly to monthly. Uh, the other change, the other uh, compliance messages uh, is about uh, uh, taxpayers who currently have EBM, but not registered on VAT. Uh, by the law, if your turnover uh, reaches a level of 5 million within three last months, or 20 million a year, within a year, within a given year, you have to register for VAT. And some of taxpayers, even if we have their cells in our database, they do not comply with this. They get a turnover over 20 million at a given period or 5 million within three months, but they do not come to RRI offices for registering to VAT. So currently we will send the SMS, a reminder SMS to taxpayers with uh, a turnover uh, reaches 20 million or 3 million by the three months, reminding him to come to RIA to, for registration. But next time within 2022 fiscal year, it will be automatically registered as taxpayers on VAT. The other message uh, concerning compliance of taxpayers regards of certifying financials. As you know, by the law, if uh, a turnover reaches 600, 600 million, you have to certify uh, financials. Uh, certifying is not something new. KPMG uh, is doing it for several taxpayers. Uh, so, some of taxpayers, what we realize is that you, they file their income tax with a turnover over 600 million without a certified financial. financial. So during the fiscal year, when your turnover will reach uh, 600 million, 200 franc, we will send you a reminding SMS uh, that you have during the trend, the, that uh, specific fiscal year, uh, we will remind you to certify financials for that uh, period. Uh, the other change regards uh, uh, the change of regime based on the turnover. I, pass, I think uh, I said something on that. 
but for specifically this year 21, the system already changed regimes for taxpayers based on their turnovers, as I told you before. Taxpayers, which currently or at that time has uh, uh, have um, have been registered under flat, and their turnover goes over 20, 12 million. We already changed them uh, according to the current uh, turnover, the turnover of 2021, uh, because we have that turnover in our database of EBM. Uh, same for taxpayers registered under the lump sum regime with a turnover over 20 million. Already we changed them to uh, real regime for 2021 fiscal year. Uh, as Philip mentioned in his uh, presentation, some entities are required to submit financial statement. But if their expenses are less than their revenues or their, or their budget, they have to pay a tax on that surplus. So Philip uh, demonstrate where you have to put that surplus on the declaration form so that you can pay income tax. After paying the, uh, the rated income tax, the system will automatically close the income tax because we will not be required to pay income quarterly prepayment as other uh, businesses. The other change re regards uh, taxpayers uh, who declare and do not pay or pay uh, do not pay fully. As you know, when you declare, you have a next amount to be paid as a tax. You have to pay it. Uh, within the period of declaration and payment. We are calling it due debt, uh, commonly uh, called due debt. If you do not pay or you pay uh, a part, on the following day after the due debt, the system itself will send you a notice of assessment. Notice of assessment is a base to uh, follow uh, other enforcing uh, procedures like uh, warning and uh, garnishment. So this normally it is uh, it was done manually, but currently it is uh, it is automated. Uh, at the due date plus one, the system sent on your email that I told you have to update every day or every quarter, and this notice of assessment is the way of enforcing the amount not paid within the period of filing and payment. We think that we have to also uh, automate some uh, debt recovery procedures, as I came to uh, mention above, uh, like warning, uh, warning letter, reminding letter. So also those uh, kind of uh, procedures will be automated. And I think some of them already have been, uh, it, it has been done for warning and reminder later very, very soon or already it is done. The other change that I want to mention this, uh, this uh, meeting is that for Kitos Fiscal, uh, the request and the issuance is done online. We do no longer get, uh, receive um, physical document as it was before. Now we have we, we have uh, an online Kitos fiscal request. And after the request, you get the document to pay the due amount. Then uh, we process internally your Kitos. Then you get it online. There is no need to come to RA offices. It is done online now. I think I'm on the last. Uh, slide of my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. We, we are ready to receive your comment, your input, your clarification where it will be needed. Thank you for KPMG. Thank you for your audience. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. And thank you, Philip, as well, for, for the nice presentation.
Now we are open the floor to Q and A. Already we have some questions uh, typed in the, in the, in the Q and A, and also some in the chat. I think you can start with those questions, Victor, you respond to them. And then thereafter, uh, if time allows, you can even allow some people who want to speak to bring their arm and help speak. So we encourage people to type their questions in the chat, and then we will be able to respond to them. Um, I will be reading three, uh, Victor, and then we answer them at the same time. And, and, and Robert and, and Philip as well. Uh, question one uh, in the chat uh, says, what happens to service industries that do not have line 16, line six? That one, I think, um, I feel elaborated, but some, some of us here don't have uh, uh, stock. They, they just uh, sell services. And that one was answered by Philip during this presentation. The other one is, is from, uh, again, Edwin Edgar. Is it possible to get the list so that the companies can check if what is captured is correct? Some expenses may not qualify for CIT. Um, uh, I don't uh, see if you can respond to this, but you mentioned that um, uh, the list when you click, it comes and, and you see yourself uh, what you have uh, in the system. So, but that one can elaborate further. The other one is from Tessile, Makre. Hey, I'm in Makre. I'd like to know when are we supposed to, to appear CIT? That one is, uh, is an obvious question according to law. CIT for 2021 should be uh, prepared and paid before 31st of March 2022. That is CIT for 2021. And we should have already started paying because then now the declaration is open according to our system. Uh, the other one is from Eric Joseph. I have the question regarding the closing stock, line A. I want to understand the controls attached to this, whether it will be based on the previous year or the stock in the EBM software. An additional question is that in the case that is an adjustment in that stock, is there any way, is there a way to adjust it before the duration? So maybe if you can respond to that, and line 16, and then the stock adjusting line eight. Uh, thank you, Angelo. Uh, your voice is not enough good to hear. It is very low. It is very low, but uh, uh, some of those questions I passed through uh, uh, in the chat, but uh, let's go back to uh, some of them. Uh, in, in the service sector, Line six is not a requirement. They do not have a, a stock of goods. So they can fill only line seven of uh, <clears throat> purchases, but uh, six uh, and the closing stock, they do not have, generally they do not have. So the system accepts zero when there is nothing there. Then uh, the rated other question regarding closing stock, uh, if it will take the previous one or one from EBM, there is no previous uh, stock, closing stock in our systems. What you have previously is opening stock. For opening stock, we will take what have been declared within 2021 as closing stock. Sorry, uh, in 2020 as closing stock. Closing stock of 2020 is uh, theoretically, the opening stock for 2021. But about closing stock, closing stock will not take, we will not take the one in the EBM because everyone, every taxpayers uh, do not have this EBM. It's a free of entry, closing stock, but know that for the next period, the next 2022 filing, with uh, the, um, we think uh, EBM, EBM2, which show us the closing stock will be, uh, will be, um, we think that all taxpayers will adopt EBM, EBM2 
And this EBM tool will help us to know exactly what is the closing stock at the last day of your fiscal year. Because I say last day because everyone do not have uh, 31st of December as the end of the fiscal year. So on this question, closing stock is free of entry, but next period with EBM2 adoption, we will be able to take the closing stock from the system. Uh, opening stock, it is what we will get the closing stock of the previous year to consider it as opening stock for this 2021 fiscal year. Uh, Philip, I don't know if you are on, you can help with other questions. I didn't uh, understand them well. If not, they can, uh, they can repeat it and uh, I will try to find the responses of them. Thank you. Philip, you are there? Hello? Yes, Philip. Yeah, it's like Victor has tried to answer most of the red questions, but there is, one I've noted, there is one I've noted. Provision of the list, of the purchase list. There is someone who asked whether we provide that list so that they can check. Yes. We shall we provide the list. In the system where I illustrated on the demo, there is where we provide the list. You click there, you get the list. Yeah, we are working on it. We are trying to update it to see how people can be accessing because the list entails big volume of data. We are trying, we are working on it to see how they can get access to that information without hindering the system performance. Okay, Victor, you can hear me now? Well? Yes, it's okay now. So uh, the another question is, is about yes. um, on. some of the EBMs raised by EBM version one do not, don't reflect on the RRA system. Is the taxpayer allowed to update the expenses updated by EBM receipts? The other one is, could you please expound more on line 101 and 102, we capital gains or losses regarding restructuring. Then the third one is about, what about grants received for an organization which has been registered as a business? You can take that in both of them. Thank, thank you, facilitator. Uh, for uh, 101 and 102 uh, rows, we try to put uh, related articles of income tax. And Philip said that it's about the restructuring of companies. Either two companies can uh, decide to operate as one company, which is uh, uh, which is uh, um, the provision of margin. those. Yeah, merging, which is merging. So when you merge, sometimes you can realize a loss uh, or again on those uh, on this transaction of merging two companies. So depending of what you realized, if you, this, you add on declaration form that you have had a loss on that restructuring, we will require you to show us that loss and to upload for us, for our information, the board resolutions, because you cannot merge companies without uh, the required, um, uh, required uh, let's say, decisions of uh, owners of those companies. So this board resolution will show us what have been decided on merging those companies and from, from that, uh, that document, we will know that this loss or gain is genuine or not. Uh, the other question regards uh, grant. Grant can be taken uh, into two considerations. One is from one who give grants, where that person will consider this grant. 
we have an annexa uh, in which we show that we do not require some transactions uh, to be supported by EBM or DMC. This grant is among uh, the, the, the items on the list. Uh, when you start to file, check on that list, you will see the place for grant. That for the person who offer that grant. For the person who will who receives this grant, the grant is a, is a revenue for him. So there is no need of control on that. The control is only on the side of the offer of grant. Thank you. Philip, if I miss one or two questions, you can respond to them, then we continue. The, the other one is about EBM version one, which does not reflect in our system. It is not reflected where? The question reads that um, some of the EBMs raised by EBM version one do not reflect on the RRA system. Is the taxpayer allowed to update the expenses updated by EBM six? On this question, simply I can respond that uh, some for some missing invoices, when on the declaration of income tax, when they uh, they do the local audit, we got those information. So yes, it is possible for VAT, but if resolved on VAT declaration, automatically it is resolved on income tax. For if some of, uh, of invoices are not reflected now by operating uh, a, a local audit, we will get them. So. We are here to assist. When you get a kind of that issue, you are missing some information. You can contact any RRA officers and give an SDC number of that, uh, of that specific um, uh, SDC or that sales controller. Then we, we do a local audit and you get those information in the system. As Philip said, now, we availed to you all details about your purchases. So go through, it's an Excel, you can take it from the system, you compare it with your, 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 your purchases and see if there is some differences. If there is, you can just take um, a, a SDC numbers of uh, related to those differences, you send it to any of our, uh, our colleague, RRA staff, and they do a, an audit for those, uh, for those uh, uh, SDC, then you get those uh, expenses, those purchases in the system automatically. It is the reason why we, the first priority for us, it was to send to uh, each and every team, then total, transactions number and the total value of those transactions, then you are able now to compare them with, with what you have now, what you were intended to file. Then any differences, uh, you can contact RRA officers for fixation. We will do a local audit and those missing uh, purchases will be automatically displayed to you via that link we propose to you on e-tax. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. The other question is about from Amodinga Joseph, who asked that um, kindly elaborate more on the line 19 expenses without EBM. You talked about the percentage of 27. You have not talked about 73%. Thanks. The other question is again on EBM. It says that EBM, in the EBM for all, taxpayers with a turnover of 20 million are required to issue EBM invoices. However, the taxpayer are issued EBMs with zero VAT, regardless of whether the service are averted. RRA, please confirm if this is correct practice. Um, the third one is about transfer pricing. Can they advise on the type of transfer pricing documents the taxpayer is required to keep and provide them the tax administration upon request by the latter? 
those that must be submitted every year along with the tax declaration, and those that are filled once and the taxpayer is only required to file subsequent changes there. From. You can answer that first, Victor. Thank you, Angelo. Let me go uh, through the first question about uh, row number 18 uh, regarding expenses not requiring EBM or DMC. Um, from the beginning of this 2021 fiscal year, we requested all taxpayers, all taxpayers uh, through different channels. We sent uh, email communication. Uh, we send it to, uh, to our website. We uh, met different uh, sectors, different taxpayers in different sectors. The purpose of that of those meetings was to encourage taxpayers to request EBM receipt when they purchase a given item. Second, to ask. Uh, suppliers to remember issuing EBM invoice to their client. Uh, we realize that some of expenses um, accounting wise do not have uh, the possibility of getting either EBM or DMC. Reason why we prepared a dedicated annex share which uh, will give us details of those kind of uh, transactions. We engaged our risk department and we asked uh, that department to uh, elaborate a, a rate which can be considered as uh, a pollution of non-supported uh, expenses based on the historical uh, filing status of taxpayers and the adoption of EBM for all. Uh, the result of that research uh, showed us that we have to consider 27. I hear from you or something like 23. I don't know where it is coming from. Uh, the rate adopted is 27% for this specific fiscal year, 2021. Uh, briefly, that reason why we, uh, we thought that we have to avail a separate Excel sheet, which will give us some details. And by analysis, uh, when we will analyze this, uh, submission for 2021, we will see exactly where we can focus uh, when we, uh, in our uh, policies of uh, EBM adoption. Uh, the second question was about EBM for all uh, with taxpayers uh, with a turnover less than 20M who do not issue EBM receipt with a VAT. Normally, when you were registered on VAT, you are required to issue an EBM with uh, VAT uh, part. For taxpayers with EBM, but not registered on VAT or EBM uh, of taxpayers uh, not required to register on EBM, they do not have that requirement to show on that invoice the amount of VAT. The whole amount is considered as uh, expense because they are not registered on VAT. They cannot, they <laughs> cannot uh, charge VAT on their, uh, on their invoices. And the system is not accepting also to those uh, taxpayers to charge VAT on their invoices. So you have to consider the amount on those kind of invoices as the whole amount to be considered as uh, expense, but for others with the VAT, the part of VAT is excluded uh, in the amount to be considered as expense as normal. Uh, 
I give. Uh, the other question is about transfer pricing documents that are needed to be submitted. Okay, right. transfer, transfer pricing, it is not something new for uh, taxpayers, even for in, in our in a, in a, in a tax, uh, tax rolls. Uh, what we only did, we updated uh, the, that, that, uh, that uh, uh, annex year, and uh, we have had, we hired a consultant uh, in that uh, in that field of transfer pricing, and he tried to uh, incorporate uh, good practices. So the information in different columns are the same as before, but the way they are they are arranged uh, is different. And some of methods added uh, before we didn't have some of them, but now uh, some of or method are added in that mm. uh, uh, annexure of pricing, uh, transfer pricing, or related person, related party transactions. So after that, that yeah, development, those update, we requested, we requested them to avail also a guidance to taxpayers. So the, the guidance is on our website, and the link is shared. Uh, some of taxpayers on chat requested us to share this uh, uh, this presentation of Philip and mine as well. We will do it, and they will follow what we have uh, as a link on that uh, specific an uh, annexure, and they will find on our website the information regarding related party transactions. Uh, secondly, we are pre uh, we are preparing. Um, a tutorial in a video that will be uh, uh, lo located on YouTube and uh, we will try to distribute it to different channels uh, on YouTube, on WhatsApp and the other uh, platform. And probably uh, the copy will be uh, shared with KPMG for their clients. So from those sources, we'll be able to know what how to fill that uh, uh, transfer pricing annexure. And uh, it is not, there is no uh, fundamental changes. It is only the way we displayed different columns on that annexure. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. If I look in the chat, there are some other related questions uh, which you have talked about, uh, like, for example, construction companies which buy sand from Ikerombe from the mine, and they don't get EBM. People who buy from cooperatives, they don't get EBM. So uh, you can talk about that so that to give them the level of profit uh, about those transactions where they can't get EBM. Philip, can you? Not well. Not can well. Can you hear me now? You can hear me now? Can you repeat that question of there construction other, sector? Yes, when they get sand from Ikirombe, they don't get EBM. And uh, those are construction companies and uh, also cooperatives don't get EBM. We accept those Okay, okay. I think I've, 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 I've read that, uh, that question in the chat. The simple answer is that we, uh, from the law, published in 2018, all businesses are required to issue invoice uh, that are uh, uh, approved by RRA. It means an invoice should be issued from the system recognized by RRA. They are not exempted from uh, EBM usage. We have had meetings with them. And we, as I explained before, that even with uh, different sectors, we explained to them that they have to request for EBM and they have to issue EBM where they are selling uh, goods. So those people, those uh, Ibirombe, those uh, uh, cooperatives, 
they are not uh, uh, they are not uh, uh, exempted from the usage of EBM. So they can go back to those taxpayers. I think even they we we sent we sent an announcement. Uh, CG of Rwanda Revenue Authority sent uh, an announcement that for 20 before the end of 2021 requesting taxpayers to go back to their client, they request uh, uh, EBM receipt for transactions which did not uh, get them. So they are not exempted. They have that obligation from 2018 to, issue, to give uh, EBM receipt to their client. So up to now, you have that chance of using uh, those uh, kind of um, of receipt in a, a, in that annex of expenses not required to be supported by EBM or DMC, but with your risk because this rate of twenty seven percent will uh, block you uh, on the on the claim of the whole amount. So there is no exemptions uh, sector wise or by 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 given. Uh, a given taxpayer from the usage of EBM, you have to request an EBM receipt to every transactions, either purchases, either uh, sales. So you have to uh, go uh, in the same way as that law published, published in 2018. Thank you, Angelo. Thank you, audience. Okay, Victor. Uh, thank you, Victor. Uh, because of time, is not on our side. I think we can ask. Uh, we can talk about two questions, and then we, 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 we give a closing remarks. But uh, we will have these questions uh, responded to uh, by us and you, Victor, and we share with the participants. Is that fine? Uh, so the, the, the last question I would do, I would, I would do, there are many here in the chat, but I would pick one or two. One is from Denise from Insurance Company. I would like to ask if RRA will provide the support on line 15 sales, line five of sales, due to the nature of the insurance business. Where on sales, the system provides the sales as per EBM report to the back office, and with the reason of how the sales are presented, as per financials, there is a big variance, meaning that some sales and insurance companies don't pass through EBM. Can you talk about that? Okay, Angelo, this is very simple. The response is that the amount of EBM on line five, the taxpayer or the, the person who uh, is in charge of filing returns, this is the minimum that will be accepted by the system. But if we have other cells which pass through out of uh, EBM or other system in use in that company, not only for uh, uh, that sector of services, even for others, the minimum we are requiring to file on line five is what we have in EBM. As you know, you can even adopt EBM within the fiscal year, not at the beginning of that fiscal year. Simply before that adoption, you have some uh, turnover to be declared also. So the minimum the system will be what you have in the EBM, but you will be allowed to add more and more and more as you need. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. We will share with you the questions raised by participants and then we will provide answers to them. Is that right? Okay. So, um, because time is not on our side uh, at this moment, I would like to pose the question uh, and answer session from there. But we will reach out to you and, and give you more about the answers that uh, you are looking for. So uh, let me invite uh, our director, Steve Nganga, uh, to tax the director to do us the closing remarks. Steve Nganga. All right, uh, thank you so much, Andrew, and thank you everyone for the conversation this morning. Um, 
As Victor and Philippa are presenting, uh, a thought crossed my mind, uh, and it's possibly something that some of us went through in school. And it hit me, we've gone through four revolutions in the world, uh, industrial revolution. So we started with uh, the age of mechanical production. We went to the age of science and mass production, and then we went to the digital revolution. And today we find ourselves in the fourth revolution, right in the middle of it. Uh, we talk about social media, we talk about cloud computing, uh, we talk about use of data uh, and, and artificial intelligence and internet of things. Um, and, and therefore, for the first time uh, in the history, we find our tax laws uh, converging with, with, with the industrial revolution, specifically with, with technology. So listening to Philippe and listening to Victor and looking at the changes that have come through, it is very clear that uh, we are in for interesting times. And, and every transaction that we make, um, every invoice that is raised, every data that you capture in your tax return uh, will be verified uh, using um, the, the artificial intelligence. Uh, and, and that's very critical. So again, thank you so much, Victor and uh, Philippe. Uh, when we started this journey and we were asking ourselves, how, how, how do you go about uh, presenting to our clients uh, and, and our potential clients um, on the changes. Um, we said we can do it ourselves, but then we reflected and said, why not bring um, the very source of these changes to our clients? And, 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 and you can see the engagement has been fantastic uh, coming from the questions that are coming through. Uh, it, it tells us that um, we are keen to know what is required. Uh, I know at some point it was very technical when you're talking about controls, uh, and I'm happy to note now that Line 18 has been sorted out uh, in terms of the changes. Uh, but uh, to all our clients um, uh, uh, who are here with us today, be assured that we work with you this journey. Um, any clarification that you need, we are here to partner with RRA and, and we'll be able to support you uh, in this journey and ensure that you comply with both the tax laws uh, completion of that form and anything else that need to be done. Um, I do know there are a number of questions that uh, um, have been answered um, and also the request to share the presentation. And I'm happy to note that uh, the RRA has agreed to share the presentation with all of us. So what we'll do is um, we'll go through all the questions, prepare um, a summary of all the questions and the response uh, to that, and then we share together with with a copy of the presentation we share with all of you through the email address that you have registered for this webinar. Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you uh, for participating. Thank you for the engagement. Uh, thank you for being here with us. We, we do not take it for granted. Um, to the RRA team, thank you, Victor. Thank you, Philippe. It's, uh, it's really an honor to have you uh, present with us. And to the KPMG team, uh, thank you so much. As always, uh, KPMG will be here to work with you, uh, to present uh, to you all the things that are coming through and ensure that um, we are up to date on everything that needs to be done. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good day and I think we can head.